dear students in the previous class we have done clauses so we have seen what are the kind of clauses and definition of clauses so uh, tell me students uh, what is clause a group of word which forms a part of a sentence and contain a subject and a finite verb of its own is called clause then we have also seen kind of clauses how many kind of clauses are there there are two kind of clauses that are principal clause and subordinate clause so here principal clause is a clause that makes a complete sense independently that means without depending on other by itself is called a principal clause and subordinate clause it's uh, a bit different that depend on some other clause for its meaning is called a subordinate clause so today we are going to start our uh, lesson this our class with kinds of subordinate clause so there are three kinds of subordinate clause adjective clause adverb clause and noun clause so first let's see what is an adjective clause so a clause that act as an adjective in a sentence is called an adjective clause so children adjective clause means the clause okay which act in a sentence that is which act as an adjective in a sentence is called an adjective clause for example the boy wearing a black shirt is my brother the boy who is wearing a black shirt is my brother so two different sentences are given means uh, same in meaning but a bit different so in both the above sentence the word that are in color letters okay that is in red letter you have seen in your um, textbook describe the noun boy so both are describing about whom about the noun that is boy so they are functioning as adjective so in sentence 1 we have seen wearing a black shirt that does not have a finite verb in it so it is an adjective phrase but in sentence 2 who is wearing a black shirt has a subject and who and finite verb is wearing so this word form an adjective clause okay so here are some important point about adjective clause let's see what are the important points an adjective clause describe a noun it usually answer the question which one okay very important point that means remember children in adjective clause it did describe adjective clause describe a noun and it always answer it usually answer the question which one okay for example in sentence 2 it answer the question who that is who is wearing a black shirt okay it's answering who then an adjective clause is usually introduced by the words who whose whom which and that so an adjective clause always introduce by the word like who whose whom which and that who is used for living beings and which is used for non living things and animals that may be used for both for living being also non living things also and animals also occasionally an adjective clause may also be introduced by as when where etc okay for example people who do not concentrate their energy on a single aim hardly succeeded in life sometime the introducing word may be omitted altogether okay for example here is the purse you may you have been looking for so here is the purse that you have been looking for that is omitted so in first sentence you see here is the purse you have been looking for and in second sentence you see here is the purse that you have been looking for so in first sentence we have seen that that is omitted an adjective clause should be placed as a, as close as possible to the noun so remember children in a sentence an adjective clause should place as close as to the noun word okay it describe so the noun effort should be to place in it next to the noun it describe so here the effort of noun the effort should be placed where next to the noun where it is describing so i hope you are clear with noun uh, adjective clause so now let's see what is an adverb clause in a sentence a clause that act as an adverb is called an adverb clause for example in case of the train being late we shall catch a bus this is remember this is not a clause this is ad adverb phrase in case the train is late we could catch a bus this is adverb clause okay so in sentence 1 the expression in case of the train being late does not have what this does not have a finite verb so it is a phrase but in sentence 2 in case the train is late okay since it is acting as an adverb it is an adverb phrase 
so in a uh, yeah, sorry in sentence 2 the expression in the case the train is late has a subject or not the subject is what the train so here the subject is train and it is having a finite verb is late so it is a clause since it is acting as an adverb it is an adverb clear clause so here are some important point about adverb clause so what are the important point let's see an adverb clause okay an adverb clause usually modify a verb what it modifies it modifies a verb since most of the verb denote an action an adverb clause tells something about the action mentioned in another clause it may tell the time place or manner of the action it may compare or contrast the action with any other action accordingly we get an adverb clause of time place manner cause purpose effect or condition so in an adverb clause it usually modify what a verb so as most of the verb denote an action and adverb clause tells something about what about the action that is mentioned in another clause okay it may also tell what time what place manner okay manner of the action or it may also compare or it can can contrast the action with any other action accordingly what happened we get an adverb clause of time place manner clause purpose effect or condition and remember adverb clause are usually introduced by the following word place if it is mentioned in adverb adver clause, if you see in place, it will always be mentioned it where or wherever. Time, when, whenever, before, after, seen, till, as soon as, as, uh, while, as. These are all time, okay. Cause or reason, since, because, as. So, when you find this type of word in a sentence, this cause of reason. Effect or result or consequence. So, that, such, that, okay. Then, purpose. Purpose is uh, that, so, that, least condition if unless concession or contrast though although yet even though even if and comparison so as as then manner is f is s okay so these are the adverb clauses that are usually introduced by the following word now let's see what is a noun clause a clause which act as a noun in a sentence is called a noun clause very simi uh, very simple so what in a sentence okay uh, in a sentence, a clause is if act as a noun, it is called as noun clause. For example, Sharda expected to pass. Then number two example is Sharda expected that she would pass. So in both this sentence, we have seen the word in color letters. Okay, they are answering the question or not? Expected what? So they are the object of the verb expected. Okay, so they are expecting, Sudha is expecting, so they are the object of the verb expected. It means that they are doing the work of a noun. In sentence 1, the expression to pass, Sarda expected to pass. This convey only incomplete meaning and does not have any finite verb. Therefore, it is a phrase. But in sentence 2, you have seen the expression that she would pass. Has a subject or not? She is a subject and had a finite verb. That is would pass. So, it is a clause. Since it is doing the work of a noun, so it is a noun clause. So, children, here also some of the important points about the noun clause. Let's see. In number one, you see a noun clause may usually act as the subject of a verb. So, the object or complement of a verb or the object or preposition an infinite or a participle. So, here it is said that in a noun clause that may usually act as the subject of a verb. So, the object or complement of a verb or the object or a preposition an infinite or a participle. So, a noun clause is often introduced by what? By that. For example, he said that he was quite satisfied. So, remember children, in a noun clauses, a clause is always introduced by what? That. So, it may be introduced by question word like why, what, how, etc. For example, I wonder why nobody had turned up. It may be introduced by if or whether also. Okay. For example, the teacher asks me whether I had understood the lesson. So, children, note that we should not judge a clause by the word introducing. It. it is important to understand its function in sentence before saying that it is a noun clause, an adjective clause, and adverb clause. That means what? We should not judge a clause by the word introducing. It is important to understand its function in a sentence. We should read the sentence carefully and we should understand the function of a sentence before saying that whether it is a noun clause, adjective clause, or an adverb clause because it is given in a different way. So, always we have to read first the sentence and we have to understand the functions. Okay. So, today what we have learned 
here in this lesson is a group of word which form a part of a sentence and contain a subject and a predicate is called a clause we have seen in here in the chapter and a group of word which contain a subject and a predicate of its own and does the work of a, of a noun is called a noun clause and a group of word that does the work of an adjective and has a subject and a predicate of its own is called an adjective clause a group of word that does the work of an adverb and has a subject and predicate of its own is called an adverb clause so we have seen this and all so i hope you are clear with the explanation so children please go through the explanation and if you find any doubt regarding explanation or assignment you can get back to me as per the schedule mentioned thank you